I'm going to bring in now Kellyanne Conway, counselor to the president. She's with me live. Kellyanne, uh, you know, as, as we go forward today, I'm wondering what the discussion is like inside the White House after this latest shooting. Well, there's a great deal of discussion, Harris. Obviously, the entire country, the world, in fact, um, watched the tape of George Floyd from several weeks ago now in great disgust and horror. I've said that he was murdered before our eyes, a slow and senseless murder. That is true. And now we today see another a widow another family heartbroken because of what's happened in Atlanta I certainly don't want to involve myself in the investigation that your reporter just said will be mm -hmm. taking place in Atlanta where it belongs but um, everybody should feel grief and sorrow for the family of Rayshard Brooks and uh, and and again we just we have to heal we have to I think you know people here in Washington DC Nancy Pelosi let's just take down some statues I mean what what how is that a response to what we see on these tapes and how will we ever heal but I want to tell you in no uncertain terms and not just because I have a law degree liberty and justice for all means everyone and we're a fragile and young democracy uh, women have had the right to vote for about 100 years this summer and mm -hmm. the Civil Rights Act was within most people's lifetimes uh, and we're a fragile democracy mm -hmm. and we have to get this right for all Americans so to the extent that we um, are expressing our pain and our grief for others I thought her composure and presence of mind through her grief um, this is a senseless loss for her family and for all of them and they spoke beautifully and you know the president is very committed also to making sure that law enforcement has the resources and the respect that right. they deserve to be able to do their job. Somebody like the, the, the murderous cop in, in Minneapolis against George Floyd, he had more than a dozen complaints against him. The union is protecting him. He's eligible for a pension. I mean, there are all kinds of things that can be done so that Kill we make sure I people are doing their job. I, I want to ask you about what the president is getting ready to announce, an executive action on law enforcement as soon as tomorrow. Obviously, for all the reasons that you and I have been talking about for weeks now, this is so needed. So now it's time to drill down on what exactly uh, that could look like, that announcement. Sure. Well, there are uh, several principles that have been discussed. Obviously, the president's been listening to many different people uh, across the aisle and across the country when he is formulating um, these ideas and he has a very large uh, group of people helping him with that as well. So um, he will announce that tomorrow, but I think it won't surprise you that, you know, we'll be talking about the role of law enforcement, making sure that uh, people understand that the role is to keep their communities safe and their neighborhoods protected and uh, that we don't want to cast dispersions over an entire industry, any industry, because of Okay. The I'm going to jump misconduct. in here because I don't also, have you. Also, information for sharing. Very long I also today. just want to—I want to make very clear also that we need, mm -hmm. in my view, we need because I work on this issue here at the White House for all Americans. We need more resources and more research on mental health um, for many of our police officers. The suicide rates okay. are very, uh, very high for active duty ones. Yes. And we need to make sure that there is additional grant programs mm -hmm. and legislation that meets this moment. Up. Uh, so would the president support the GOP bill? And at the same time, would he back any compromise with Democrats? Because this feels like it's imminent. I mean, you've got, well, at least the voting and discussion is imminent. You've got Senator uh, Tim Scott headed, you know, in the direction of putting something forth. What does the president actually think he could do? Well, the president is listening to everyone who wants to talk to him about this. And that includes Senator Scott, who's been uh, a really very strong and credible voice throughout and also a partner to this White House on many different measures. And so we will continue to work with him and others. The president, of course, will sign something that gets to his desk that he thinks is reasonable and has been negotiated. He's proven time and time again he's willing to take bicameral, bipartisan legislation, whether it's the First Step Act, um, monumental, historic a drug reform legislation, obviously the the economic action he's taken recently. So he's willing to take bipartisan, bicameral legislation that makes sense on, on an issue, and he's willing to sign that into law. I just, ha I just hope, Harris, that Congress gets to work, because the president, you know, he does these executive orders in large part because yeah. Congress doesn't do its job. Where are they? He's here every day. Where are they?
Well, there's bipartisan agreement across the country if you look at the approval ratings for Congress in the last decade or so, so definitely. Kellyanne, I want to get to this, a major victory for LGBTQ rights advocates today. The Supreme Court ruled uh, LGBTQ employees can sue for workplace bias under the Civil Rights Act of 1964. And Chief Justice John Roberts, Justice Neil Gorsuch, joining the liberal wing in the 6-3 to three decision on all of this. The White House reaction. So the president will probably be asked about this today. We have a 2.30 event, open press pool event um, about seniors, everything he's doing for seniors, including cutting down on the financial fraudsters who are trying to hurt our seniors in addition to what's happening to them in nursing homes around the country and the like. Uh, but I will say I was really struck by the concurrence and the dissent by Justice Kavanaugh and then also Justice Alito, who just made clear something I want us all to remember. Whether you agree with the opinion or not, um, the role of the three branches of government is sacrosanct, and it's in our Constitution. The, the legislature makes the laws, the, the president executes the laws, and the judiciary interprets the laws. And that is important also. I think that Justice Alito made clear that he doesn't think this is, a, this is about textualism. We've had the Civil Rights Act for 56 years, and everybody has understood what it has meant. But I, I'm not going to get into the merits of the decision one way or the other. I just believe, I mean, me personally, right. I believe liberty and justice for all, as I said earlier. Um, I think it's very important, right. though, to stick to stick to a statute or a law as it is written when that is before the United States Supreme Court. If people want to change the law, they should go to the Congress. Okay. And again, our Congress doesn't seem to like to work as hard uh, as wanted... the other two branches. I want to jump in, and I know you're an attorney and that you have a personal opinion on that as well as the White House reaction, so I appreciate you sharing that, Kellyanne, but I want to get to this, because it also is imminent. The president is about to hold a roundtable helping senior citizens, and we know that he was capping drug prices for insulin, and we know diabetes is one of the comorbidities for COVID-19. There's a lot there to protect seniors. Which part of it will the president jump in on? Uh, with his roundtable today. Sure. Thanks for asking. Of course, he has done everything from uh, reduced surprise medical billing to prompt making good on his promise during the campaign. Harris did not touch Medicare and Social Security. Medicare suffered cuts in the last administration. He's protected them. And then very recently, capping the cost of insulin, $35. Today, he's going to review some of that. Mm -hmm. But also, we're really leaning into something I did in Tampa, Florida on March 3rd with Attorney General Barr. And that is to cut down on the financial fraud that is hurting our seniors all across the country. So we're giving banks more leeway and more guidance that if you see a senior citizen is withdrawing his or her life savings, they probably have gotten one of those calls or texts or emails or threatening notes um, to do that. So there's a ton of financial fraud. We're giving seniors more tools to help them fight against that. And there will be more penalties for those who would hurt our seniors. It also deals with our underserved communities. Seniors are one of them, but also our African-American, Hispanic seniors and Native American seniors as well. And the president mm -hmm. will review all that he has done in those communities as well. Yeah. We have to protect our seniors. I think this, you know, forgotten man, forgotten woman always includes the forgotten seniors, and he's there to, to help them, including today. It'll be open press and everybody can watch it. Great. And, and of course, uh, we'll be covering that on Fox News as well. Just real quickly, a thought that I had as I was reading through some documents on what seniors are facing and talking with them here on the East Coast, the whole coronavirus lead up to putting the very sick in nursing homes and them not having a collective voice, perhaps that can be addressed too. I don't even know what yes. that would look like. Yes, but the president first did that Kellyanne, on April 30th. Thank you very much for he first did that on April 30th. He'll do it again today. CMS and HHS have been on top of that, and you're right. Some of the governors had allowed our infected right. seniors to go back to these long-term care facilities and nursing homes, helped spread that virus, and our seniors deserve better, and we're here to protect them. Thank you, Harris. Kellyanne Conway, thank you very much. Appreciate your time.